Okay. I'll call the meeting to order for 6.30. <clears throat> Welcome to the Committee of the Whole for Monday, June 5th, 2023. So the first piece of business is the adoption of the agenda. Did they're looking to the clerk's department, any amendments or additions? Seeing, seeing none, recommendation is the June 5th, 2023 agenda be adopted as presented. Do we have a mover? Deputy Mayor, so moved, seconded by Councilor Ennis. Any comments? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof for this evening's meeting? Seeing none, go to staff reports, Committee of Adjustment Composition. Welcome. You have a presentation this evening, so please proceed whenever you're ready. Thank you. Okay, um, so the purpose this evening, um, we've developed multiple options for the future composition of the Committee of Adjustment um, for consideration by the committee. Um, this was previously discussed at the Committee of, of the Whole back in 2020. Um, so throughout this, we considered some comments that were made at that time, and also to bring forward this again in, in front of us, where we're in the um, council now as well, and we're just going to be seeking direction on um, the preferred approach. So just to provide some background, in 2020, the Committee of the Whole provided comments pertaining to the composition of the Committee of Adjustment and ask staff to consider these comments and to conduct some further research. Um, I'll outline those comments shortly. Um, the Committee of Adjustment is currently, as you know, made up all of council, um, and that uh, current Committee of Appointment um, does expire in December 2023. Um, the, uh, the terms of the committee is outlined um, under the Planning Act. Um, the committee must contain a minimum of three members. Um, public members can be appointed for the term of council, and council members can be appointed annually. Um, so planning and getting get into that. Um, but the general composition make up is, is, is flexible and not dictated by the planning. So um, we have brought forward some options um, and then we're just seeking uh, some direction. But um, we do want to highlight though that public members um, are being considered to be included on the committee. Um, we, would, we would be looking for a decision on that um, preferably this summer so that we would have the sufficient time in order to advertise and provide training and so on to help them into this for um, next year. So to provide them a bit of background, what um, the, the four, there's four main options that we've kind of considered. Um, the full, um, the first one being a full public membership, um, which can consist up to seven members of the public appointed by bylaw for the term of council. Um, and so it's noted um, though that the procedural bylaw right now does speak to seven members. Um, however, procedural bylaw could be amended to include um, less than seven members if that was the preference. Um, which is the minimum still set at three. Um, some advantages of full public membership, um, it allows us to um, provide some useful citizen skill sets to bring into the committee um, and their expertise can be leveraged, um, provides a broader perspective of community values and involvement, um, and um, can be a slightly reduced workload on council members having to partake in one last period. Um, some of the disadvantages can be, um, you know, we can't predict the amount of interest um, that will come forward when we advertise or whether those that are applying are going to meet the established criteria. So um, that's always un unknown until we start. Um, and from what I understand in the past, there, when it was a previous public committee, sometimes there were issues getting um, qualified applicants. Um, another disadvantage, um, the committee of adjustment may disagree with council on proposals. That um, or vice versa, um, that when you're looking at multi applications. So, um, for example, uh, someone comes forward to committee of adjustment with a severance application that requires a rezoning as a condition. Um, the committee of adjustment makes a decision on the, on the severance um, and the associated condition for the rezoning. And then the rezoning would have to then come forward to another body council, um, which could potentially deny the 
the decisions that you can have some just join us that way. Um, and um, there could be potential challenges in reaching forum. Um, understand again, this was an issue sometimes that uh, was locationally when it was not public community in, in the past as well. Um, the second option uh, would be maintaining the status quo and keeping it as, as all of council and then appointed um, annually by bylaw. Um, so the advantages of this um, can be decisions aligned with the council decisions when you're dealing with multi-factor um, proposals and um, for, forms typically not a challenge. Um, and then disadvantages, um, again, the workload on council who already sit on various committees. Um, the perspective of the committee is narrowed by council members only. Um, there could be potential for a conflict of interest. So in a situation where um, a committee decision is appealed to um, the Ontario Land Tribunal, um, it, in that situation, staff would be seeking council's um, advice and direction on how to proceed at, at the Ontario Land Tribunal, um, which puts um, some person in a difficult position when they were also the committee of adjustment making um, and being that decision body. Um, the third option um, is a subset of council. Um, so this would just be um, full council, but then limiting the number um, to three or five, um, and the odd number being recommended um, to um, prevent um, anything on tie votes. Um, and that would be again pointed annually um, as well. Um, advantages um, the, again, the committee decisions, a lot of Campbell aligned um, majority of council decisions um, for the most part. Um, and could also do rotating um, appointments within the term of council to slightly um, to share the workload throughout um, each, each year. Um, disadvantages, again, um, the perspective of the committee can be narrowed um, to council members only, um, and then that potential conflict of interest um, would still apply as well. Um, the fourth option, uh, so this would be a public council hybrid membership. Um, so this would include a, a defined number of public members appointed for the term of council, um, and then um, and then council members identified as well, um, appointed annually, um, and that make up one company public versus um, council members could be discussed as well. Um, advantages in this, um, you know, because you do have some council members sitting um, sitting on it, um, it, it could bring some of that continuity to the um, the, the conflicts that could happen if um, there's multi applications. Um, rotating appointments um, could be done as well for the council members um, to reduce workload. Um, there's overall committee benefits um, from participation um, by experienced citizen members that may have a lot to bring to the table. Um, and the council members can also assist when um, public members do not have to be as familiar with sort of the procedures, um, whereas council members are, and um, so can learn from the council that way and, and follow their lead. Um, achieving quorum would also be less of a concern with some council members um, being present as well on that committee. Um, disadvantages, uh, I, again, when um, appealing up to the public, we don't have the level of interest at this point that, that we would get in the qualifications. Um, and then similar to before the council members that would sit on it um, would still be in an awkward situation if anything was appealed. Um, and then we have to uh, seek direction from council afterwards. Um, so to recap, um, at the, at the September 8th, uh, 2020 committee and the whole comments that were received from the committee at the time, um, the, 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 the biggest comments that we heard um, were that generally in the committee adjustment used to be a public um, public membership, um, and then it was moved several years ago in, in order to expedite the process, um, primarily we have committee of adjustment and then council the same night. Um, and getting that continuity um, where you, you as someone with a double application that put up their severance and their some bylaw amendment to approve on the same night. Um, concerns were expressed in that situation. Um, and it was noted that it did happen a couple of times in the past where there were some conflicts between decisions between committee of adjustment and council. Um, the committee also provided um, comments about um, having council members um, provides a level of comfort in terms of consistency since council is the one that's making the decisions on the zoning bylaw or subsequently with the zoning bylaw review that we're going to be undertaking soon um, and then you know people coming in from community of adjustment to get relief for, um, and, and minor variances from those provisions that council set up um, <laughs> so that, that understanding is already there 
um, that there were con um, concerns about the previous um, public committee in terms of attracting members and, and forum being an issue to achieve sometimes, um, which caused um, a delay in the process for um, some applicants and that had to be canceled and we have to wait the next month. Um, there were quite a few comments in terms of um, the hybrid option um, and how it would allow for bringing in knowledgeable residents while at the same time having a better chance of achieving to be in the forum um, and the hybrid process allowing for a transparent process um, by having both um, elected council members on it as well as um, appointing um, general members of the public. Um, overall, staff can staff can work on, on any model um, selected. Um, however, based on previous committee, the whole comments it, it, it seemed from a staff perspective that the hybrid model would probably be the best approach in terms of addressing the previous previous comments that um, that were made by the committee. Um, but granted, that that was the last term of council, so maybe some other perspectives this evening that um, need to um, shoot the as well. Um, the other the other piece um, is this that we're looking for tonight as well is um, if if um, the public appointments are, are a preferred option whether it's through the hybrid or a full public um, committee um, we're looking at some selection criteria as well um, to be considered um, so that we're not going to council and is approved then um, we can you know we have the criteria to, to go out and start um, advertising. Um, so we can generally draw from the citizen appointment policy, which is in our procedural bylaw, um, you know, which is the general requirements of being a township resident and um, being uh, greater than 18 years of old age, um, having complementary skills or um, identifying areas of specialization. Um, and then there's the, the potential conflict of interest that, um, you know, that, that we're always able to assess in, um, in applications as well and whether it should um, preclude them from being appointed. Um, some additional criteria that, that we've identified um, in addition to that, that just gets a little bit more into the knowledge and, and what um, you would be looking for um, with, with having um, identify strong knowledge of the community um, in terms of both um, the urban, the rural, um, as well as the island, um, in interest in you know, the challenges of community building, um, education or experience and in certain professions like advocacy work, land use planning, law to name a few, um, familiarity with planning processes, um, the overall processes as even zoning bylaw amendments can then be tied to um, community adjustment applications, um, ability to review and understand policy and, and apply to decision making, um, strong decision making skills, communication, mediation skills. Um, being organized, um, availability um, to attend meetings, um, site visits are often um, required and helpful as well um, with committee adjustment members, um, and being fully committed to attend all committee meetings, um, and, and trying to obtain a, a representative distribution um, around the township. So, um, you know, both um, ge geographically, um, primarily considering. Um, and to have experience um, um, in demonstrating on other township, municipal, community boards, or, or committees, and having some of that experience in the past um, were some additional ones as well. Um, so these were some of the ones that we were um, recommending that would be considered with that with a public approach, um, but obviously open to hearing some additional um, criteria as well um, to be considered too. Um, so overall, we're just seeking direction on um, the preferred approach. Um, as well as the selection criteria, and then outline the four um, potential options um, up on the screen for your consideration and either receive any comments or answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any questions or comments for discussion on any of adjustment? Councilor Broderick. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to clarify for me, so it sounds like any of these options with counselors on it, there's a potential of a conflict of interest no matter what the options. And um, I guess it's a balance because from my point of view, I also understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this decision is final, that it doesn't go to council, committee of adjustment, it can only be appealed by the OLT or, or, or the OLT. Or, Yes, that's that's <clears throat> it's an independent body that has a final decision making that. So in effect, if we chose up an option A, there would be no elected official making that decision. 
Okay. And personally, I, I think there should be a number of elected officials on any of these committees because that's in my judgment why we're elected. And um, I would have I would have personally uh, trouble with the uh, A for sure. Um, more of a hybrid approach um, from my point of view anyways. And if I could just ask uh, Andrew a general question about uh, on page eight of the report, and I don't have a problem with this, but can you just sort of uh, reaffirm or, or the, the idea of a non-controversial example in terms of delegating some stuff to staff to uh, do in this situation? I think it's page eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sure. So an example would be, so if there's a, um, say, an application to create a new lot um, and it meets all the zoning requirements um, and we have circulated and have received no public comments. Um, and so it's generally um, pretty standard, no concerns from the public and there's no zoning bylaw amendment application needed on top of it, um, then that would generally be one that I would consider a minor um, severance. And would you have any idea Maybe an unfair question, but a ballpark of based on percentage would be would that be like 10%, do you think, in an average year? Or can you even throw it at me? Just give me an idea. Um, I would say maybe five out of ten okay. applications, maybe approximately maybe about half. And if I could just uh, again my own opinion here, I think uh one of the things we're lacking and it's nobody's fault, but we're trying to get the the um Public more engaged in some kind of hybrid option, um, whatever it might be, uh, would be the best from my point of view, just to get the you know people involved. And I know having had one recreation committee meeting where we didn't have quorum, it would be helpful to have some kind of hybrid model. Thank you. Other members, Councillor Willis. Through the chair on this. Is probably for the clerk's office. Could you? Um, Thank you. If we did go with a hybrid bond when there were three counselors on it and we were faced with making a decision about an OLT thing, would those counselors be able to excuse themselves from that discussion to avoid any conflict? <clears throat> so basically, if you're in the committee, you're not acting as a counselor, is my understanding. Um, so you're a member, and what council? Council. So you're asking if council at a council meeting that you'd excuse, be excused. No, I'm asking if uh, if something was going to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Oh, okay, yes. And council were asked to provide direction to staff on how to move forward with that. Could those councillors who also sit on the committee of adjustment declare a conflict of interest and excuse themselves from that discussion? I believe so, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Other members of council. Councilor Ramos. Thank you, and through the chair. Um, I think a number of the items that have come over to the committee of adjustment so far this term seem to be fairly uh, straightforward. Um, so just wonder if you could give me a sense of um, in the past, uh, what are some of the not so straightforward types of applications that, that come forward to the committee? Yeah, I would I would say um, you know not straightforward ones that can get more complicated are with the applications that don't meet like official plan criteria, and so staff can't support it. Applicant proceeding anyways, so those going forward down to committee of adjustment with uh, a recommendation from staff to deny the application. Um, public input um, being a, a huge one. Um, we, we haven't had a lot of recently, but there have been you know, a significant number of files in the past, um, you know, particularly for rural severances and concerns about neighboring wells drying up and um, you know, uh, surrounding landowners being opposition in opposition to those severances. Um, same with minor variances where neighbors feel that um, there could be an impact on their on their property if it's an next door neighbor. So some of those ones that um, come in come into light um, and can create more yeah controversy and um, get more complicated and, and require more discussion for sure. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments for discussion? Seeing none, I have a 
couple of questions myself. Um, the one that's been mentioned a few times is uh, um, in the past, there was an incident where zoning came to the council and uh, the committee hadn't approved the severance. I'm, I'm a little, I'm trying to understand how that would happen because normally the zoning, the rezoning would be a condition of the severance. So until the severance was approved with conditions such as zoning, Am I am I looking at the wrong situation here? Like, how would the zoning even come forward if the severance wasn't approved with conditions? Yeah, I generally anticipate it to be the, the opposite of that, where the separate where the committee of adjustment is approving something with a condition, and then it proceeds to council. Okay. For the zoning bylaw amendment that that is that condition, so you have a different body making a decision on a condition that was. You know, recommended to be approved by another body. Okay. Um, okay. I see where that could in potentially be, but I, <laughs> I think it would be extremely rare, but it is a potential. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, and I'm not sure if I guess nobody else was on council when it used to be full um, public. Um, the Committee of Adjustment Minutes used to come to council, and I I used to think that we received and endorsed them, but maybe we just received them, because if they're their own body, governing body, then we must have just received them from for, for information. Is that the way it would go in the future? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's my core memory. <laughs> um... Okay. So those were my questions. Um, I guess, uh, is there any other members that have questions or comments? Councilor Parks. Thank you, um, through the chair. Just the question on the hybrid model. You're, you're talking about the possibility of reducing the whole hybrid model to five people, or <clears throat> excuse me, or leaving it at seven, but only five would be. Be required to attend the meeting to actually hold the meeting. I'm just not clear on that. Um, so it could it could be any as long as there's at least three members, it could be any composition that the council wishes. So generally, we have seven members in the current procedural bylaw. Um, so if we're discussing potentially three members, then we could have four um, public members, and then, but you would only need if, so if that was the makeup four and three. Um, which would be which would be sufficient. Um, then during the actual committee of adjustment meeting, we would need at least three of those um, to be in attendance in order to obtain quorum. Thank you. Four. 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 Yes. Yeah, four. 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 Yeah. Four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other? Sorry. Any other questions or comments from council? I'm go ahead, Councillor Pruden, Quadric. Just a comment more to extend the hybrid. I like the idea of a hybrid of five members, three being council, because then you're probably always going to get quorum. And based on what is happening or has happened, it might be hard to get uh, four people to serve on such a committee. Possibly, I don't know. Maybe there's an interest out there somewhere. There used to be interest but it hasn't been around for a little while so it's hard to judge what it would be at this time yeah um okay so do we if there's no other comments deputy mayor uh, <clears throat> for you uh your worship i would move to uh receive the report and presentation and direct staff to complement option b and for that to include seven members, three of council, five of the public, and include the selection criteria described in the report. Three and four. Right. You said three. <laughs> okay, just yes. clarifying, thank you. Yes. And, okay. And you spoke to number two as well? And 
the selection that's in here. Okay, sorry, I was yep. I was doing the math in my head and I didn't hear that last part. Yeah. So moved. Do we have a seconder, Councillor Budrick? Mover, any comments? Um, I, I mean, I've um, I was obviously part of that exam committee of the whole discussion back in twenty twenty. Uh, I've been a supporter of the hybrid model. I think uh, I am. Um, I'm, I'm against full council membership simply because I think it politicizes the process of Committee of Adjustment, which is a quasi-judicial body under the Planning Act. And I've found, too, in, in personal experience that often members of the public um, lack an appreciation for the nuance and the differences between those roles. And so met as a, as a councillor and as a member of the Committee of Adjustment, one can often be lobbied by uh, proponents who are coming before the Committee of Adjustment and lobbying in such a way as though you're, you know, acting as their counselor, and it puts it puts counselors in a difficult position, and the public can't really be faulted for making that confusion when committee of adjustment is comprised entirely of counsel. So I think a hybrid model is 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 the better way to go for all the reasons that have been described tonight, and and comments from other colleagues. You know, having some members of council on the committee I think is important again for the reasons stated. So. Thank you. Seconder, no comments. Anyone else have comments? Thanks. Councilor Proctor. Can you stop for clarification? You're looking at option, you said option B, is it option four? Option two. Oh, I see. Okay. So option B and number one. So the hybrid model. I must, I must be missing it. Oh, on that. Okay, on that. All right. Okay. On the agenda. On the agenda, yeah, I was looking I, in the report, report, in the report, it's numbered. That's right. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, Councillor Willis? Through the chair, um, are we also including the delegated authority as recommended? Uh, at the bottom of the report, it was mentioning the delegated. There's already been some delegated authority and a report uh, will be forthcoming with the impacts of Bill 109, is that correct? So we're not actually voting on delegating here. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Sorry, Director? I might be out of order here, but um, also if we're picking, could we get um, maybe confirmation that the selection criteria is adequate? I have, I have that in the motion. I did refer to that in the motion. Okay. I, if I may repeat yes. the wording. So in the motion, I have read that the selection criteria described in the report. Okay. Councilor Prager. One, one last clarification, sir. Uh, could be up to seven members, and if we don't have seven members, that's fine, as long as there's three. Well, well, sorry. Uh, so if you're going to go with seven members, then you would be on the quorum of the meeting for a for a decision. I believe three under the act is is what is mm -hmm. required, but I think we would have to look at the it may just clarify the act requires the committee be comprised of three members, not with respect to forum specifically. I believe what Council Product was saying is if we can't get yeah. four public members, there may only be five or six members of the committee of adjustment, ideally not six. And we would do our best to try to get the full seven. Um, and then you will require um, majority hmm. for quorum. So whether or not the committee, um, if we can get seven or not, that's what the procedural bylaw will say with respect to this, up to seven. Ideally, it will be seven, and we don't really want six, but in which case, you would still need four of the quorum. Um, in that case, I believe that was the question. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Councilor Willis. <laughs> Sorry, just for clarification. Um, so, page seven of 10 of the report at the very top, it says where a committee is composed of three members, two members constitute a quorum, and where a committee is composed of more than three members. Three members constitute a quorum. So does that mean if it's a seven member committee, three members constitute a quorum? My understanding that it's up to that you have to have a minimum of, of three members. Um, 
However, then I understand forums to still work as we would generally think of forum, just even in terms of council and having the majority to make a decision. I know we ran into a situation once where we were down to three due to conflict of interest. And I believe the act says, the legislation says that that's a, that's acceptable um, to go down to three in a case like that. I'm not sure if it says it can be all the time. <clears throat> so with, while they're looking for that, is there any other questions or comments? I, uh, I'll provide a comment then that I do like the hybrid model. I've uh, been in favor of that for a while now. Um, for all the reasons that the deputy mentioned with the confusion and everything else, um, it is hard to get for people to understand the difference between a council member and a, and a committee member. And uh, so in there alone, and it, it's still, um, Doing a hybrid would uh, simulate the other committees that we have, such as Heritage, where it's you know a council member and members of the public to to uh, to make the the total um, committee. So uh, I think it uh, I think the hybrid is a is a good idea, and I think it's a great way for us to go. Yes, Ms. Burness. Just to clarify that, what I had written in the staff report is accurate. So three members are required um, before. So even if you have the seven, then the act does provide that exemption where we, where three would still cost two more. So it would assist as noted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Review of framework for committees of council. Thank you. So whenever you're ready, you can proceed with the presentation. Uh, so the purpose of the next report is to fulfill council's request to review the current committees of council. Uh, first, we will be going over the attached committee framework, um, followed by the section one. So as the staff has mentioned in this report and previous reports, there are some inconsistencies with current policies and procedures as they relate to committees. This framework would form part of the committee policy currently within the procedural bylaw, which will be later discussed at this meeting. The goal is to have a consistent approach to committees and to centralize the policies and procedures for committees. The proposed framework would streamline the administration of committees of council and would allow for a more open and transparent governance of committees. Um, so I've provided um, members tonight with the committee framework that was attached to the report. Um, so I, I thought we would go through each section of the framework. So first being uh, committees. So these would be advisories, advisory committees of council. Um, so if we want, we can go, if a uh, committee has any questions about any of the requirements that we put in there, we can go line for line or um, whatever you guys prefer for discussion. Any preference? 
Okay. We'll go through a line by line then. Okay, sounds good. Um, so within the framework, four committees, um, we've broken it down to various sections. So first up uh, is the link to the township. So an advisory group, group working to make recommendations to council on policies applicable to a specific function. The membership would be appointed by council following an application process. Um, so current committees that follow this process is the Heritage Committee, the Recreation Committee, the Critical Energy Committee. The chair would be a member of council. Uh, staff involvement. Um, so staff are not responsible for the committee. Um, however, they are support. Staff within the clerk's division would um, work as the committee support, as coordinating administrative, sorry, administrative support and recording decisions. So publishing agendas, minutes, et cetera. Uh, and then operating division staff has a resource for technical information related to the committee function. So for example, within the heritage committee, it's the, her the heritage assistant and um, recreation staff assist with the recreation committee. Um, terms of reference are developed and adopted by council. This includes their mandate, object objectives, membership, makeup length, and appointment of members. The meetings must comply with open meeting provisions under the Municipal Act and the Township's procedural bylaw. As mentioned, agendas and minutes, they are drafted and published through um, Township resources, so through Civic, Civic Web. Uh, decision making process, uh, the committee would make recommendations to council for their consideration and adoption. Uh, finances, the budget would flow through the township. Um, so there are some committees that currently have an operating budget, and then there's current committees that do fundraising, which comes into the township. Uh, code of conduct and policies. Um, so there is a committee code of conduct applies, uh, and then members are not paid. Uh, and then insurance is covered under the township liability policy. So that would be kind of the framework for committees of council. Uh, next in the framework is a working group. So the link to the township is a group of volunteers working with township staff to further township business. The membership is recruited by staff in accordance with the volunteer management policy. The chair is a staff member. There would be no council member on the committee. Uh, staff involvement, team of volunteers work with the township staff to accomplish tasks related to a specific function, project, or event. Uh, there would be no terms of reference as it's not a committee of council. Meetings, um, these, are not con these are not defined as meetings under the Municipal Act. Uh, so there would be no requirement to publish these publicly through the township's resources. Uh, decision making. So this would be a collaborative approach in line with township procedures and guidelines. There would be no use of township budget or these working groups. Uh, for the code of conduct, volunteer policy and code of conduct applies to working groups. Volunteer members, um, but members are not paid. And then the insurance could flow through the township liability policy. So next in the framework being presented is the incorporated nonprofit organization. Uh, so this group is its own entity um, with no direct affiliation with the township. Uh, membership, again, no township involvement, so we don't set the membership for the, for the organization. They would select their own chair. For staff involvement, staff may work in partnership with the nonprofit to support the group's initiatives and or provide mutually beneficial services or programs to users. This would generally be accomplished through an MOU that outlines commitments of all groups in the township. Uh, there would be no terms of reference set by the township, uh, no meetings set by the township, and no uh, agendas and minutes published. Decision-making uh, would be no township involvement. Again, this would be the organization, and the organization would have their own um, finances, there would be no budget for it for the organization. Um, again, code of conduct, they would have, they would have their own code of conduct and policies they would fall under the townships. And then for insurance, um, this wouldn't be covered by the township. Um, the requirement would be for the nonprofit to its own liability insurance. So <coughs> with that kind of overview, I'll leave that open. Questions, comments, discussion. 
Okay. Any questions or comments or discussion on the matrix? Seeing none. So I'm just going to clarify one point. Um, for public agendas and minutes, um, the committee is the only one that would be providing the pub to the public. The others would just be an internal within the working groups or the, the uh, non nonprofit organization. Uh, that's correct. Um, they could publish their own minutes through their own website or make them available to the public if they wish. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Prodrick. Uh, through your work, just there. there are, um, Jam back here. So the dog park, that was was that a committee or was that a working group? Uh, through the chair, that would have been an ad hoc committee of council. Terms of reference were established by council um, as well as membership. And there was an application process. Um, and I think, and I talked to the mayor, I think once about this before, um, just the idea of the ad hoc committees, it'd be great to, if we could stay away from that simply because Usually, and I think this would bear it in the past that you're establishing a committee of those for and those against. Like it's really hard to have a neutral party, I think, sometimes. And I just think that might be something more of a volunteer working group in that general sense. I know it's never going to be 100% one way or the other. But, um, just on the committees, and I know what's in there in terms of compensation, is you think. That might be something that might encourage more people. I know we're not going to be looking at thousands of dollars, but just some kind of remuneration, like recreation committee, maybe they get a pool pass for the years or something that you know might encourage people to get a little more involved because I know that's seems to be an issue in, not only in government but in local um, nonprofits too. Uh, through the chair, um, council could put that in the budget line if they wish. Um, one of the inconsistencies with the or the committees right now is there are some committees that are receiving remuneration um, for attending committee meetings, and then there are other committees that aren't receiving remuneration. Um, so that could be looked at. We just need to make that consistent. Yeah, through the chair, sorry. Currently, it's through the terms of reference for the two committees and not in the other terms of reference for the other committee. Thank you. Councilor Parks. Thank you. Just to follow up on that through the mayor. Um, the two committees that do have a remuneration, they seem to be the most popular. Would that be a fairly accurate assumption? Through the chair, um, I would say they are the longest standing committees. Um, so the Heritage Committee and the Recreation Advisory Committee. Deputy Mayor. Um, and just a point on that, the, the chair of the Heritage Committee does not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments for discussion? Go ahead, Deputy. Well, it was it was jokes aside, but for new members of council in the last term, that was determined that members of council who sat on committees did not get further remuneration for their committee work. So point of information. Thank you. One more. Um, and this may be just to the mayor or through the mayor uh, to staff. Are, uh, is the mayor and the deputy ex officio on any of these committees or just the mayor? Just the mayor's ex officio on all committees. Although I'm not a voting member, and it doesn't it doesn't count towards quorum, according to the current procedure by law. <laughs> um, uh, through your worship, again, anything can go into the terms of reference if council directs that that is. So at the time it wasn't; it was just in in name only. But if the request is to have it and and therefore forming part of quorum or or about. Then that can be written into it. That could be a possibility too if we're running short on. Not that I need more 
committees to go to, <laughs> but if it means that the business gets taken care of, that is another option as well. Yeah, that was almost sounded self-serving, didn't it? Um, any other questions or comments from council? Seeing none, um, do you want to just go through the rest and then deal with all of the recommendations at the same time? Okay, please proceed. Thank you. Um, so next within the report is to the recommendation is a discussion on the renewable energy fund grant review committee. Um, so again, this was the, the two subcommittees had recommended merging the committees together to form one committee, and it was further discussed at the main committee of the whole meeting uh, with um, some support of merging the committee. So the direction was to uh, provide a few options for what a merged committee would look like uh, for the membership. So we have put together four options um, for discussion and consideration. Um, option one being the appointment based on population of each ward. Um, so this worked out to one member from ward one, one member from ward two, and five members from ward three, and one council member appointed. Option two would be five residents at large and one council member appointed. Option three, one resident appointed from each, each of the following geographical areas, so Amherst Island, Odessa, Amherst View, Bath, and Mainland Rural, and one council member appointed. And then the fourth option is two residents from each ward and one council member appointed. So if there's any <clears throat> questions. Council, any questions or comments on this? Councilor Willis. Through the chair, just a question. I like option four, I like each Board having equal representation. Is there any reason why you wouldn't have a council member from each of the wards also be part of that committee? Um, we were aiming for a membership of, of about uh, five to seven. Um, if council wishes to have a council member um, from each ward appointed, that direction can be provided. Councilor Ennis. Thank you, thank you, the chair. Um, to, just to clarify, we're talking about here the committee membership. We're not contemplating uh, any changes to the the policy uh, or the pools of funds. Twenty five percent to ward one, the seventy five percent ward two and three. So it's just that remains the same. And this one committee's job is to review um, the application that may come in under the ward one stream, or they may come in under. Uh, yeah, that's correct. And um, the the review of the policy that was discussed at the committee of the whole uh, that will be coming um, to a future committee of the whole meeting with the with the discussion points and, and direction provided. Councilor Boudreau. Uh, through you to clarify, just to double check uh, um, the math on on Councilor Annis. Um, it's 25 for Ward 1, 50 for Ward 2, 3, and I thought 25 was reserved. Just want to double check that, if it's still that. I thought we were going to put 25 in reserve for the long term. Uh, no changes have been made to the policy at this point, so there is still 25% going to the response. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for discussion? Director? Sorry, I just want to clarify, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with respect to it. So the policy is 25% to reserve with 60% to the fund and 15% to the, sorry, 60% uh, to the uh, renewable energy fund and 15% to the grant. And then of the of of those of the portion to the fund, that's where the split happens between the wards. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this item? Seeing none, please proceed. So third recommendation within the report. Um, so as I mentioned, um, council had direct, directed a review of the committees. 
Um, due to the timing um, with the summer months, a lot of these committees and subcommittees are kind of in their prime season when they're when they're doing a lot of things very active. Um, so we're we're recommending that the um, review of the, re the remaining committee be completed after the strategic plan review. So the committees would be the Heritage Committee, the Recreation and Service Advisory Committee, the Amherst Island Recreation Subcommittee, the Bath Canada Day Subcommittee, the Bath Museum Subcommittee, and the Mayor's Economic Development Committee would be reviewed at a later date. Thank you. And that would be in time for the fall call for memberships, right? Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Councillor Willis. Through the chair. <clears throat> so those committees that were on that list will continue to operate as committees as identified here and will be covered under township insurance. Uh, they'll operate status quo house as they've been operating in previous years as committees. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Prabhak. Um, just, a, just a question in general. Is there such a thing as a uh, cemetery board in the township anymore? No. Okay. There was um, the membership. We couldn't maintain membership, so we had to uh, disband it. So is, is any of that stuff covered by staff? Like, yes, uh, it's, it's uh, covered by um, staff and they bring they set the budget as well bring the budget to council for for approvals each year any other questions or comments seeing none okay thank you so council we have uh, oh, sorry there's one more recommendation please proceed okay thank you um, so the, the last point in the report that we're looking for direction on is the establish, the establishment of, of an appeals committee. Um, so under the um, building code and the property standards bylaw, uh, the council is required to set a appeals committee for property standards. Um, so currently this has been on an ad hoc basis where council has um, stood has the committee. Uh, so we're looking for direction, and one of the recommendations that we are recommending is that uh, the membership is part of the committee of adjustment. Um, so if there's any comments or questions on what that would look like. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this? Councilor Prager. Uh, through your worship, so an appeals committee would they would be basically between the committee appeal and then could it still go to council? Because these are just uh, uh, committees that make recommendations. Uh, through the chair, this would be a quasi-judicial committee, so it, it wouldn't go to council. Hey. No, I don't like that. Did you want just for clarification? Yeah. So, an order would be placed through, uh, say, the building department uh, in regards oh, to a property okay. standard. Okay. And then, if, if once they got the order, they could appeal that if they didn't agree with the order. And that would come to the appeals committee to deal with the order. I think I totally misunderstood. So, that's just for the building. I thought we were talking about all communities. No, no. Okay. It's okay. just Sorry. anything that had to be okay. uh, an action. Yeah. Okay. Anything. Anything that is enforcement deals with yeah. when it, if someone wants to appeal it, there's a committee that they can go to and it's already established. Yeah, it could be animal control, um, uh, um, muzzling orders, those types of things. So anything where an order's been placed. Okay, that just didn't fit with what we were talking about. They're all yeah. <laughs> I'll put my muzzle on. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments, discussion? Seeing none. That was the last one. I'm learning. I asked the question. <laughs> Thank you. So, Council, we have recommendation with a few options in front of us. Um, do we? I guess one of them is. We can just go for a motion or we can talk about each one of them and, and establish a, an understanding. 
Want to do it that way? Go through each one? Yeah. Okay. So one is just receiving it. Number two is the membership, committee membership for uh, the subcommittee. We have four options. Any comments on that discussion? Councillor Boudreau. <clears throat> Uh, through you, um, uh, I like Councillor Willis's idea of uh, two residents from each ward, uh, which option for for the renewable uh, energy one, except making the amendment of having a, a councillor or a council member from each ward uh, appointed as well. If if that we could amend, basically for that for option four, for the renewable energy uh, one. Okay, so that would make a total membership of nine. Then. Yes, it would. Okay. If, if that's acceptable, but I uh, just what? yeah, equal well, representation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Any other discussion on that or comments? Saying none. It looks like that's going to be mostly acceptable then, if no one's questioning it. Um, and number three, remaining committees of council being. Um, status quo until after the strategic plan. Any discussion or comments on that? Councillor Broderick. Um, <clears throat> general thing, it seems uh, a lot of things seem to sit on the strategic plan. I'm just wondering when the beast is gonna be attacked or presented. You know, we're looking at a year, we're looking at months, weeks, um, more than once in the first year, we can't do anything to we want to, we want to Put it back to the strategic plans in place. And I just wonder where that is, time wise. Whoever can answer that. This leave it to the CAO. Further <clears throat> to the staff report from the city council. At the beginning of the pre-consultation about where we're at, like what our um uh comments from the public and staff regarding the existing plan will start in August and then it will come to council for the first session uh in September. Uh, to go back out to the public for comments with regard to once you do that first session with your new objectives, new priorities, potentially new initiatives that go back to the public and um, staff do a session to determine all the initiatives and then it comes back probably early October. Ideally, we want to do it as soon as possible in October so that it can be ready and can feed into the budget for 2024. So we're probably looking at status quo until then with all these committees that. The intent was that we thought that perhaps out of council strategic plan, council may wish to establish some committees or, or change focus um, with respect to some of the committees. And, and ideally that comes out in September and the, the committee report then would come back uh, to, to recommend appointment to the new committees with new terms of reference for council to appoint. And then we'd be looking at advertising to the public for the ones that the council wishes to be committees of council and then we can appoint them too in the fall. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Well, we have a recommendation before us. Um, point of order. Pardon me? Point of order. Yes. Number four again. Okay. The, the appeals committee. Okay. I mean it's it's obvious. It's, it's it, okay. Same. Yeah, I was thinking that would be a minor one, but I better not assume anything. <laughs> so number four with the P appeals committee, um, the, the uh, any comments or discussion on that with it being the um, committee of adjustment being assigned those duties? Seeing none. So with that, um, do we want to make a motion? Deputy? Um, I move to receive the report and uh, direct staff according to our collective understanding. So that would be uh, to uh, that the report from the clerk's division, June 5th, 2023, re review of framework for committees of the council of council be received. Um, and that the attached committee framework be supported in principle and form part of the committee appointment policy once reviewed, and that a bylaw be brought forward to a future council meeting containing all necessary amendments to the Renewable Energy Fund Grant Review Committee terms of reference 
that reflect merging the two subcommittees and that the Committee of the Whole select option four with the addition of uh, three members of council, one from each ward, and that the remaining committees of council being the Heritage Committee, the Recreation Services Advisory Committee, the Amherst Island Recreation Subcommittee, the Bath Canada Day Subcommittee, the Bath Museum Subcommittee, and the Mayor's Economic Development Committee be further reviewed after the completion of the strategic plan review and update is completed through an update to the committee's bylaw to include all committees of council. And number four, that an appeals committee be established with a minimum of three members and that the terms of reference be presented at a future council meeting for approval. And with, with the terms of reference at the future council meeting, that's when they, uh, it, the decision would be if it was the committee of adjustment as well. Okay, thank you. So moved, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Prodrick. Mover, any comments? Um, only my thanks to staff for bringing this forward. I think committee work is really important and that is something that I feel um, needs to be consistent in, a, in approach and it is part of our larger strategic priorities to engage the public. It is meaningful for the public to participate in advisory committees and uh, I think we're, we're headed along the right path with this. Thank you. Seconder, any I comments? I would just uh, amplify that by saying uh, proactive involvement of the, of the public is more uh, important than reactive. And if we can get more people involved, it makes probably our jobs a lot easier. True. Any other comments? Just That's our perks. Thank you. Just for clarification. Were we not supposed to pick an option under the framework for the committee? Um, sorry, for the appeals committee? Or did I miss that portion? Provide that direction? The terms of reference will be coming to a future council meeting, and that's when there'll be a recommendation okay. for the committee right. of adjustment to, to make it up. Does that answer your question? Uh, I believe that Councilor Towns had a minimum of three members, which is what the recommendation is on here, but I was just trying to get clarification on the actual report because of the options. That's through the chair. Yep. Uh, if Please I, go ahead. Um, so, based on the discussion uh, about the Camille's, uh, appeals committee, um, the direction that we're getting is that it form part of committee of adjustment. Was that the consensus? Yes. Okay. Do you want that in the motion tonight? We'll take that in the motion tonight. Okay. okay. Do you want to include yep. that in the yep. motion? Seconder, are you acceptable? So it is included it's as a committee okay. of the adjustment. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Back to the mover. Final. With that, I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Procedural bylaw review. Thank you, and here. Um, so the procedural bylaw uh, that's coming in is, is we're presenting it with uh, through, through the PowerPoint and with the understanding that there will be some streamlining of the procedural bylaw. Uh, we'll go through that. So the um, we'll go through each of the slides and then there is a section at the end should we have missed something that any member of council wanted uh, to discuss and, and we didn't highlight it in here there's that opportunity and then the idea will be uh, that the draft bylaw that comes will uh, to be presented to council will incorporate the discussion that we've had uh, tonight that you've had that we've got direction on so so just oh, think just to clarify yes. um you're looking for all all comments so that you can compile them and come back with a report later. And it's not necessarily we're coming to a decision tonight on yes, any. That's, that's Thank correct. you. Uh, so within uh, the uh, section of the uh, PowerPoint, there are blue boxes that uh, on basically each of the slides that kind of provides a suggestion, recommendation, and are looking for direction. So that's where we'll we'll uh, deal with each slide as as we go through. Thank you. Please proceed. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the um, procedural bylaw is the rules for governing uh, the order and the procedure for the council, your policy, your procedures. Um, and we do uh, an annual review of it uh, in regards to legislative changes uh, with a fulsome review done following municipal election. Uh, basically, that allows for the new council to become familiar with it as well as to uh, have input into uh, the creation of the uh, or any changes. Uh, the review also permits removal of any duplication, clarification, and to match any of our current processes or to ensure that we're streamlining processes to uh, go out the back. So, oops. so the definition section is exhaustive, <laughs> it's extensive. Uh, we'll be going through that and just again making sure we, we only have in there what's required and removing any outdated or ones that we uh, may not need. So it's just again so just to, to look at it. Uh, the oops. The meetings list, so we'll go through these uh, uh, in a little more depth over the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, part of this, as well as the committee uh, discussion that just took place earlier. So the inaugural meeting in uh, is the first meeting of a new council after municipal election. Uh, it's very prescriptive right now where it's, it has the date uh, with the change of legislation. We did have to make a change in regards to the staff report. The intent or the suggestion is that it could be flexible in that it would be set by or in consultation with the incoming council. Uh, this would allow for if there was a date that, you know, a um, new council member couldn't make the date that was set. Although I understand as well as the date set well in advance, then that does allow any new council member uh, running for election to know the date of it. You want to, yeah, if you want to just have the general yeah. discussion and if you want to let us know what you. The inaugural meeting then, Councillor, sorry, you had your hand up, oh, Councillor Project. I'm good with it, move on. <laughs> Councillor Willis? Question on that. Is there a maximum amount of time that could elapse between the election and the first meeting? I'm just thinking the clerk didn't like the council. It just would never get started. <laughs> it is that in legislation uh, that it can go no longer. So typically, uh, what's happened is uh, we have it as soon as possible um, following the election so that the new council can get in. A lot of times, if, if what was referred to as lame duck, uh, it, it, you want to get the, the new council in. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I'll, I'll just give a comment then. Um, I like I like setting basically a date and I, for me, every time I went into election, I knew you kept that date open, you didn't you know, go away or barring any unforeseen, you know, medical or something in the family, you know that that's where you're going to be that day. Um, I do know it, it makes it a little more prescriptive, but uh, when we're running for council, it's I, I think it's good to know ahead of time. And that way everyone is aware before they uh, enter the, uh, the election. That's just my two cents. Yes. CAO? If I just may, Your Worship, um, that date would be set months in advance of, of it um, in order to book rooms and the events for the clerk to plan such a meeting. It's just that sometimes the procedural bylaw is very prescriptive to say it's the first Tuesday after whatever. And then sometimes that does not always fit with schedules uh, for council. So uh, ideally, it's, it's up to the Sort of new council and new mayor to determine which date exactly, but quite often that set, in my experience, was set during the election, really, to say this is the date we preserve because rooms have to be booked and vendors have to be um, reserved for that. So either way will work. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none. Uh, next one is council. Uh, so that is. Um, confirmed uh, with the day and time of the second and fourth Monday of each month commencing at 7 p.m. with some exceptions um, such as conference or summer break statutory holidays. So there is a, 
a break in uh, July and August. Uh, time limit is set for three hours, uh, which is starting from seven till 10. Um, and then limited in having, uh, again, limited in having to use the section uh, as for the most part an annual staff reports presented each year that outlines the dates and any changes that are anticipated for mm -hmm. conferences and that sort of thing. Totally aware of the dates that are set for the meeting. So basically here it's to confirm that you want to keep it uh, the second and fourth Monday of each month commencing at seven and or uh, provide direction of Council, how do you feel? Monday's okay? Is there another day that suits schedules better? Seeing none, seven o'clock. Is that uh, deputy? <laughs> I may be I may be putting the CAO on the spot, but I believe the CAO had some mm -hmm. some differing feedback based on her survey of council. Okay, Councilor Booger. Uh, same conversation as the deputy with the, the CAO regarding the survey about there was interest in other days from members of council. Okay, what I know I know I put in Tuesday. Tuesday. I'll, I'll throw that out there right now. I know I put in Tuesday. Okay, but yeah. I'm not sure where um, anyone else was at because that was their survey. Others, how do you feel Tuesday, Monday, any other day? Councillor Pratt. Um, I think I had the same conversation with somebody. And even there's lots of holiday Mondays, et cetera, and it, it would give you an extra day as a councillor to prepare for a meeting rather than a weekend. Uh, Tuesday seemed to be a, a reasonable uh, day. And I, don't think it conflicts with any of council, or county, or conservation authority, any external agencies. I don't know. I just, I'd be in support of Tuesday, too. Okay. County council's on Wednesday. Um, so it doesn't conflict with that, unless, according to the procedural bylaw, if there's any items left over from an agenda and we, we uh, adjourn for the evening, it's to be finished the next night. So we would have to look at that because the mayor and deputy mayor would be at county council on potentially if they line up the same week. As well, your worship, uh, if there happen to be say July 1st, well, I guess it wouldn't be on that. Never mind. I just gonna say if it happened that there was a statutory holiday that fell on the second or fourth Tuesday of the month, then it would go to the Wednesday, which we would have to look at changing. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah. Just another, it would be another item just to address. Yeah. Councillor Willis. If that were the case, could it not move back to the Monday, which is not a holiday? Okay. Councillor Ennis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we were to move it the meeting to Tuesday, would we still receive meeting materials Thursday? And is that the when of when we get the meeting materials? Is that, um, Stated in the, in the bylaw. Through your worship, yes, it is outlined in the bylaw of uh, its two business days uh, prior to the agenda. But again, that time frame can change. Um, so, not to put you on the spot, but are you thinking that an extra day to be able to prepare would be advantageous? Keep it on yeah. Thursday. Yes, I, if we did move to Tuesday, I would strongly prefer that we receive the meeting materials still on Thursday. Okay, on Thursday. thank you. So, any other comments? It sounds like Tuesday. Is that or is there? I'm I'm flexible. Um, it just means that the deputy and I will have back to back meetings. We'll have. Uh, Township Council meeting on a Tuesday and a County Council on Wednesday. And part of Board of Health for me. And Board of Health on, on Wednesday for you. Um, Conservation for you. So as long as I'm just I'm just putting out all the uh, all the information, um, I'm not I'm flexible with either one. Maybe we can just do it with a quick uh, poll. How many prefer Monday? 
Tuesday. Looks like Tuesday's the winner. And the time for seven, does that, uh, do we want it to stay at seven or do is, does it work onto a schedule better? If we start a little earlier, it's, if it's earlier, our closed session, if we have one is before the council meeting. So it could push it further ahead unless we change that in the, in the procedural bylaws. Well, we could do it after a regular meeting. Deputy? Um, speaking to someone who's resident of Amherst Island, it being on the hour is probably better um, and for future counselors from uh, the island simply because when the boat arrives, it can be, if it starts on a half hour, getting from Millhaven to uh, to Odessa to get your materials set up and whatnot, it's a bit of a rush. So I think it's starting on the hour is better, whatever hour that happens to be. Okay, good point. Councillor Parks. If it, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's possible to start at six, that would be my preference. Um, I find sometimes when the meetings go until 10 o'clock and then we have to do the procedural, procedural change to go past that, um, when you're getting to 10 o'clock at night, your mind is not as sharp as it should be in dealing with matters. So I'm not sure okay. that's an option for other. So options put out for six. How does that work for other schedules? Some um, children? Some, some that, you know, depends on what you're, if you can get back from, you know, work and what. Just uh, well, uh, just a, a question that I think plays into the um, discussion we'll have later with the committee as a whole, um, and tagging that onto a council meeting. If we were to switch the council meetings to six o'clock, then when how would we tag on the committee of the whole meetings? Those council meetings. We'll look at that. Should there. Through your worship, so that would be part of of the agenda, and it was just form. It just it would it's just, it would still start at six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. one started earlier. Okay. Answer Willis. So if there were closed, the close would start then at five, or we would just start at six if it's closed, or six if it's open. Go ahead. My understanding from this is that you want it to start at six uh, for closed. It would depend on. Um, I guess the amount of time, I know I believe it's hard for people to get, for council members to get here for five or earlier, so it could be that the closed is, you going to close following the regular session. We used to do that, and then we moved it ahead. Um, there is the chance that it looks like it'll be a long closed session, and it's not, and so we, we wait until open, but... Uh, that's another option we could put it at the end. Hmm. Any other comments between the for the time? Do we want to do the same thing, just a straw, straw poll? Um, six o'clock, who likes that? Yeah, no sense in asking the seven. <laughs> six o'clock on Tuesday. Thank you. Um, next is special counsel. So these are um, summoned under 240A or B of the Act having the same uh, privileges as regular council meetings. So these would be called uh, on an as needed basis if there's something that needs to be done and or if there's um, kind of sometimes planning may have something that uh, requires. So they're just, uh, the, the mayor may call the meeting, the clerk on receipt of a written request of majority of members of council, the clerk in consultation with the CAO, i.e. training, time sensitivity, uh, orientation, those types of things that whether we do it under maybe the whole or special council. And the only business to be dealt with that special meeting would be that what is identified on the agenda. Okay. So no changes were proposed for, for that. Uh, it's not used all that often, but it's there if, uh, if the need arises. Usually it's just time sensitive material that can't wait till the next meeting. Any questions on that one or any comments? Please proceed. All right, so the, so the next one is the Committee of the Whole, and it is uh, Council sitting as a committee where members can consider debate and provide direction on matters in a less formal setting than regular council, so the rules are a little more relaxed. Um, uh, the committee, sorry, uh, at this time, our meeting 
um, following the committee of adjustment on Mondays, on the first Monday of each of the month. Um, and then at the time it was whether there whether those agenda items of whether the uh, committee of the whole would uh, would proceed or not. So if there was no matters, the committee of the whole would be would be canceled similar to committee of adjustment. Um, understanding again the idea is that uh, you could continue with the set monthly meeting or consider incorporating into the regular council meeting, which I believe was part of the survey that uh, that was circulated to council. So there's that discussion of whether you want it within the uh, council meeting. Oops. So council, I have a question, but let's go to count. Uh, Councillor Ennis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just, I just, I think if tagging it on to a, a committee of to a council meeting, um, it offers staff a more timely option. Um, I guess there's two council meetings per month, which is the one committee of the whole. And then, I mean, um, for me personally, it's we're here doing the, we're here, um, our council meeting. Um, it, fine with me to, to go longer if needed. Um, so I would prefer fewer longer meetings, essentially. Okay. Uh, Councillor Willis. I'm not sure that I'm clear on what it would look like. Would there be a section of the meeting that is committee of the whole? I'm just worried that if the public is watching, and we always hope that they are, that it would be confusing that we have a more casual part of the meeting where we have a free flowing discussion and then. We switch tone, and my experience has been since we've started meeting that the committee of the whole meetings tend to be quite long because there's a lot that staff bring, and I think there's value in having that as a separate meeting. Only my opinion. Okay. Other comments, discussions? Councilor Parks. Thank you. Um, I've experienced both with it being included with the council meetings as well as separate. Um, I think my preference would be similar to uh, Councillor Willis and uh, be separate because there is a lot of information that comes forward and discussion that comes forward with the committee of the whole. And I don't want that to really get muddied with the council meeting. So I, I would prefer, I think, as much as I don't want to do an extra meeting, it's nice to be here for one meeting, but uh, or two meetings in one night. I think it, it's more beneficial to have it separate. Okay. Councillor Project, did I see your hand? You did. Um... I like the idea of less, and I'm thinking more of the people out there that, you know, would cut your evenings down by at least once a month. Um, having said that, if that wasn't possible, I would look at moving it to Tuesdays, similar to the council meetings, or if you're consistent on that. Okay. Councillor Boudre. Um, with uh, Councillor uh, and Assange, longer if we have to, fewer. And okay. like uh, Councillor Prodrick said, Caesar and staff, fewer nights. Nobody's got their hand up. I'm going to ask a question for clarification. I, I don't like to jump in before others can say their their piece. The format for it. Um, I just want to try and get it clear in my head. Um, so if it was on the same night, we would call the council meeting at six o'clock. And with the Doing it on the same night, would it be would it, and would the, either one of the meetings be able to be shortened, or would we have the same length, which could make a four hour meeting? I'm just trying to figure it out. Like with the committee of the whole right now, so what we're doing tonight, it'll come back to the net, to a council meeting, and be approved. The recommendations that come out of this will be approved. So I'm I'm trying to picture it. Would the council meeting be reduced potentially and more items in the committee of the whole and then that the re, the committee of the whole would come to the next council meeting to be approved i'm just trying to i'm trying to figure out if we're adding two of course well we would have two committee of the holes instead of one so it'd be half as much on each agenda potentially i'm just trying to make sure we don't end up with a six-hour meeting yeah to put a blunt like that's yeah. So typically, the, your committee of the whole again is is in the last formal. So the any of the recommendations are not recommendations until they're ratified at council. So the idea would be that your meeting at the beginning of your council meeting is going to be ratifying the committee of the whole from the previous meeting, and then you're then 
once you're done your regular meeting, then you move into meeting the whole and have that discussion. But you would still have your staff reports and that Everything within else. the regular session. Okay. So the, the savings in time would be two committee of the holes a month instead of one. So we might end up with one or two items instead of a number of them potentially. Okay. CIO? Don't mind your worship, but if I can speak to this because this is kind of my idea, actually. Um, I don't cause a lot of problems, but uh, with staff, with only having one committee in the whole month, it does sometimes, um, unfortunately, delay some staff reports because stuff is not quite ready for that one, so we have to wait a whole other month for it. So the idea was that if it was part of um, council, and, and it wouldn't be just another agenda item, and it may, it may or may not be committed in the whole, my experience too is is to answer Councillor Willis's point is that the chair changes and the deputy mayor and chairs committed the whole. So they get up and change and they go into committee the whole. So then they have a different and the procedural bylaw does cover the sort of more informal discussions on topics. It would have similar procedures as it currently has for committee the whole. So you can talk more than once on an item and, and do those kinds of things. I also want to commit that. Um, staff currently do a little bit of wrangling with uh, agenda items, and with, if there was a very heavy council or committee um, agenda for, for staff reports or items, we would move and push reports so that we would not overburden council to have a, a long meeting because it's there. So potentially if there was some committee of the whole items that council needed to discuss and they were heavy like, like the night, we likely wouldn't put that on an agenda with a, a very heavy council agenda as well. And we would move things around so that the, you could spend more time on committee and whole discussions. So that ideally, you would always have a, a similar time frame. You wouldn't have to go really late with any of your combined meetings. Um, saying that, if there was an item that council wished to have sort of a more thorough discussion, it's always possible to have a special committee and whole. And you could have that on your Monday, and, and if you want, if it was something large that council wanted to talk about, then you decided that well, I don't want that there. Um, so there's no reserved time. It's just dealt with item by item, and when you go into committee of the whole, the whatever time it takes for that discussion. But staff do try to move things around so the council doesn't end up with a very heavy agenda. Okay, thank you. I, I think I've. It's coming clear. Councilor Prodrick. Sorry. I said that um, first. Just an observation, Your Worship. I just went through three of the last committee of the whole, and it's only three items on each. Um, you know, um, and all of them seem to be, uh, uh, I would say, internal situations, you know, like the community hub, what we're doing tonight. And I do like the idea that we're doing maybe half, not half the work, but Staff has two weeks maybe to get something in, knowing that it'll be dealt with. And I and from a cons, from a customer service point of view, I've heard in the community people sometimes have done things or made uh, maybe something comes to the community the whole or discussion that takes a month to get to where if it was uh, two weeks or fifteen days or however it is. But just looking at the past ones, you know, three seems to be about the majority of items on the committee the whole. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Parks. Thank you. Pass through the mayor, just back to the CAO. Uh, thanks for that explanation on that. Um, that's great that there would be some sort of limitation or, or um, process to maybe not have too heavy of the meetings for the committee as a whole. Uh, thinking back to previous council, there was a couple of nights that we went till almost 11 o'clock with the committee as a whole and then uh, council meetings, and it's not conducive. So I do <laughs> like that idea. Thank you. Mr. Willis, did I see your hand? Yes. <clears throat> um, I'm just thinking of the way the agenda looks now, and that there are meetings where we do have a number of people from the public that are wanting to make delegations and presentations. Many of the whole would happen after that so that they're not kept waiting to have their say. Thank you. That helps. Any other questions, discussion, comments? I guess for me, the explanation on how that it would be structured um, kind of clarifies it a, a little bit. And I'm I'm more comfortable than I was at the beginning. Um, 
because I, like I said, and has been mentioned before, and I'm sure staff feel the same way that after working all day and then come to a meeting, you know, by nine o'clock, um, I know for me, I'm usually starting to wear out. And uh, so that, but that was one of my concerns, but it sounds like that can all be mitigated. And uh, there might be the odd one that still goes long, just like there always has been, I guess. So, so is that give you enough information then? Okay, thank you. If there's no further comments, we'll, we'll proceed. So the next one is closed, which again, I think everyone's aware of uh, where we're uh, uh, close to the public as permitted by the act. Uh, there is a protocol already established, uh, but it's basically duplicated within the procedure bylaw and within the, the policy. So there's no recommended changes other than we'll just streamline it again so that it refers to the policy and to the act uh, and only what required in the procedure bylaw uh, will be included in there. Sense. Any comments on that? Thank you. Please proceed. Okay, the emergency uh, means again a special uh, uh, a situation or a threat of an impending situation adversely affecting property and or health, safety, and welfare. Um, and it's basically where the, by the nature and magnitude required a time of coordinated and controlled uh, response. Uh, as uh, you'll be aware, we used this during the pandemic where an emergency meeting was called uh, where there wasn't notice that was the notice was uh, limited to what was what was outlined in the procedure bylaw. Again, uh, no changes are proposed to this. It just allows you to have an emergency meeting should you should you be ready. Any questions or comments to this? I've only seen it a couple of times. Down well, most basically at the beginning of the pandemic, we had one for the county and one for the township. Okay, please proceed. The next one is the committee. Um, so again, we really didn't do any of this because uh, like I didn't go into depth on this one because of the committee presentation earlier. Uh, so the, the committee framework will be there and that will form part and we'll bring that into uh, form part of the procedure bylaw to make sure it's consistent uh, between the two. Okay. Any comments on that? Please proceed. Uh, next one is public meeting, and these again are about public information sessions held by the, the corporation. Uh, no changes are pre uh, proposed for this as well. So this is where uh, it's uh, presented that public input is encouraged, uh, could be held within a regular council meeting, or maybe a separate meeting depending on the subject matter, i.e. the planning. Uh, I know there was presentations in regards to um, the Amherst West secondary plan, those types of things. Um, and sometimes they're also referred to as like a town hall type meeting. So it just allows for uh, the ability to have both. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Please proceed. All right. So that was it basically on in regards to the meeting uh, part of things. Uh, going into the next, uh, again, your procedure bylaw does allow for suspension of the rule. So if you hope you don't have to use this too often, then you are using it too often, then we just look at the uh, bylaw to see what sections are, are being used against it and review the bylaw for any proposed changes. But it does uh, basically mean that any motion to suspend any provision, i.e. go past the three uh, hour time limit, uh, or allow a direct motion or notice of, versus a notice of motion is used only when necessary and require the two third vote. Any post changes in that? Any comments, questions on that? I have one question, mm -hmm. and it's going back to a former slide as well as this, because you mentioned the three hour limit. That would still stay if it was a hybrid council and committee of the whole, or would that num would that length would we be looking at that changing, do you think? We could change that to four, or you could leave it at three. Okay. And again, the intent is that you can all change it if you so wish. So we can leave it at three, and if we end up using, going past it too often, then we can look at the bylaw. Okay, okay thank you. Any other questions? Please proceed. Uh, okay. So the next one is electronic media. 
So this originally spoke to the audio and video recording of council meetings. This was free live streaming or any of that. Uh, we did have uh, uh, some um, signs on the door that basically uh, spoke to what was allowed in the council chambers. Uh, now it's live streaming that um, is basically can be removed from the bylaw, although we do have to uh, incorporate off of our live streaming. So there is a section that speaks to it, but we'll want to incorporate more uh, in-depth uh, details in regards to that. Uh, so council committee of the whole and committee of adjustment meetings are being live streamed at this time. Uh, some committee meetings are being recorded and then uploaded. A lot of that is based on the uh, staff resources, the setup, uh, where the meetings are taking place, those types of things uh, that somehow, somehow, sometimes, sorry, limits how uh, we would be able to live stream. So right now we do have a, a movable <laughs> camera, but uh, uh, the, the room here is going to be um, with cameras and, and that, which does allow for the live streaming uh, more readily than uh, if we move them around. So, and then a protocol uh, regarding live streaming will be created as well. Uh, so we did have one that spoke to the um, processes for joining a meeting. If the meeting wasn't working, that will be updated as well. And uh, again, not be part of the procedure bylaw, but will be a, um, a protocol to, to uh, support it. Okay. Any questions on comments on those? Councilor Willis. So currently the procedural bylaws is that no one can record. Are we getting rid of that completely? And so anyone can walk in here with a camera or recording device, do whatever they want with it. Okay. Through, through the chair. So before it was a matter of if Council wasn't recording um, some. I think the idea was if somebody else was recording it and then they would come to council. If you don't have a means to go back and, and verify what you said, it was it was just harder. So I think that was why, again, I can't speak to it because it was before uh, uh, I had originally come, but that was the idea of not uh, allowing work. I think they had to ask for permission to record. Um, I don't know that it was ever denied uh, that I'm aware of, but right now because we're live streaming, it's recorded and being live streamed, so the need's not there to limit anybody coming in and not being able to record. And just to answer your question, about the only time that we did we did allow it, um, mostly it was a reporter, but bring a video recorder and put it on the seat beside them. But every single meeting they had to ask permission, council granted it, and then they could record it for uh, for their media outlet. Um, other than that, it was never really an issue. Um, there was always concerns about clips being used appropriately, but anybody can go to YouTube now and watch the real meeting and know what happened. Any other comments, questions on that? Seeing none, please proceed. Yeah. Um, the next is the electronic participation. So the original or the bylaw, sorry, the bylaw does speak to it. However, it was again uh, written uh, prior to the pandemic, so it was limited in the procedure bylaw to what the legislation had allowed at the time. It was one person uh, per meeting, those types of things. The idea would be is to incorporate the changes that were uh, given to the uh, in the legislation to allow. Councils to have live, uh, or sorry, to have um, electronic meetings and participate electronically. So those procedures will be updated to reflect that. And, and then again, the processes will be separate under a protocol to outline what that looks like. Okay. Any questions or comments? Councillor Prodrick. Through yeah. your words, just a generalized question. Um, in terms of participation, is there any, uh, theoretically, could I be on for a whole year to do it from home? I'm throwing it out there. Good question. Uh, I don't believe it was. I don't believe anything stipulated in the current, but it might be something that we would incorporate as as uh, some limitations in regards to that. I believe it's silent on that right now. Um, the way I the way I thought it was intended was it would be live unless 
through extenuating circumstances. You know, if somebody's not feeling well, but they're so they don't want to come into the room and spread it, you can join or on vacation or something like that. Um, that's the way I understood it, but I think we're silent basically now. Yeah. It I think yeah, we'll just make sure that that work is in there to ensure that it's the intent is is that it's in person with the uh, ability to participate in. Yeah. For some reason. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the general procedures, the open meetings forum, presiding officer, chair, no changes. Um, Proposed uh, again, it speaks to meetings being open unless permitted under the legislation to be closed. Forms the majority of the whole number of members required, except if authorized under uh, uh, conflict of interest act. So, if somebody, if a couple members have um, done uh, issued a uh, conflict of interest, then the form numbers change. Uh, the mayor is a presiding officer unless provided otherwise within the procedural bylaw, i.e., deputy mayor for maybe the whole or whatever we stipulate within uh, within the bylaw. Changes were kind of Any comments, questions from this council? So this is where the the uh, example was given that if we did back to back meetings, I'd chair the council meeting, and then we could set it up, and it would be right in this portion here where the deputy would chair the committee of the whole. Yes. Okay. I kind of. Not to get out of chairing, but that is a good distinction. I like that, that it was, it's a very clear distinction to the public too. Anyway, okay, thank you. The next, so this is, again, this uh, can uh, may generate some discussion. So the agenda preparation, the, the current is what's on the screen. Um, we're looking at um, the proposed, which would um, fine tune some of it. So again, the closed session, we'd have to look at it as to whether that would then move to the um, towards the end of the agenda, uh, starting at six. So we would look at uh, again fine tuning what that would look like based on the discussion tonight. So there's some new ones in there. Uh, you're, you're still having the confirmation of the agenda. It's just moved up the declaration. You remember, like the uh, original is that we call to order, go to the national anthem, the land acknowledgement, then move right into open form. So the idea would be is to do more of the um, um, statutory items, such as calling, or sorry, calling to order, but confirm the agenda, the declaration of the preliminary interest, national anthem, land, uh, then public meetings, and switch to the presentations, delegations, and then open forum. <clears throat> uh, we'll go through some of the other items within there, like on um, open form, what that means or what that looks like. So that's just kind of a sample. Um, we'll we'll fine tune that once we go through the rest of the agenda as well. Or can do that, and council can change it. Council, any questions, comments? I just have one. Um, at our strategic planning at the county, um, there was some discussion that. Um, Trying to get the trying to get make people more aware of the responsibilities of the county versus municipality. Um, there's a lot of confusion, and and I mean rightfully so. It is hard to get your head around if you're not involved in it. One of the things that came up was a uh, there were some of the municipalities that said it would be nice there to include the county minutes in. The municipal um, agenda as an information item, just so that the it's people are. I know there's a lot of people that are coming in and watching the YouTube. Um, people that I never expected to, um, and they're very engaged. And so it's just an option that uh, just to bring the minutes in from the county. And it would probably just be under consent because it would just be an information item, but at least it would be another avenue for them to be able to review and educate themselves. Any other comments, questions? Just, Does any, Councillor Roderick? Just, uh, I don't know, and you know, Claude here, but so uh, for instance, I don't know if you were talking about these 
things further down, but I'm just going to ask, would uh, um, count the privilege now? Would that be under announcements? So, okay. so Your Worship, it is again trying to be cognizant of the, of the public who are looking at agendas and, and whether they would know what member's privilege is. I know it was under, under the definition, but it's just, again, to try and, and make the agendas more uh, public friendly or user friendly. I like the idea of simplifying it yeah. and making sure, same as I was always in camera. Yeah. Everybody thought that you went in a room that had a camera and it's actually a closed session. So just stating it very clearly, it's a closed session is a good good item. Councillor Parks. I just wanted to say, I think this is a good forum. I think it's very clear and very concise uh, to help the public. And through your worship, of course, well, this will change with uh, incorporating the committee of the whole and other blocks there will be changes. So as, like I say, as we're getting the information tonight, if this will change, but it'll come back to council to have further discussion on this. Okay. Any other comments? Please proceed. Uh, so the minutes, um, it basically speaks to council specific and uh, so the idea would be referred to minutes, uh, removing naming of staff members. Um, sometimes it's hard to on that part of it and I don't know that it adds um, anything to the minutes per se because it is council meetings and that the minutes uh, are presented on the next agenda so council gets a copy of the, on the um, the next agenda where they approve them. Okay. So it's just minor amendments that would be suggested in this section. Okay. Councilor Prager. Through you, your worship. Um, so I have no problem with re removing staff members' names. Would their position be listed? Like if, if they're recorded in the minutes, you know, director, planning, nothing at all? Yeah. So no reference to any um, to any staffs answering the questions or anything like that. Uh, there is with sorry through the through the chair. I mean it's without note or comment. Uh, you'll notice even in the minutes, even if a council member asks, we keep it that it's what the question is or what the comment is, not the um, not the idea that it's you know councilor project asking a question mm -hmm. uh, because it is without note or comment. So the question's asked and there's no response or there is a response, but uh, just no names. There would be clarification. So again, depending on what it is, if somebody's asking for clarification or something like that, that may be in court. It really depends on what the question is uh, and what the response would be. So if somebody, especially under a committee of the whole or something like that, if you were asking for clarification and a clarification was presented, then it would be clarification presented on or clarification okay. provided on the item. Uh, but it doesn't state who asked or who said it or what, what the response was. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, discussion? So I just have a follow-up question. So removing the staff member's name, they wouldn't be in the attendance at the top either then? It would be just silent or yeah. just, just in the minutes they wouldn't be included in the discussion? They're not, for, for the most part, they're not uh, mentioned throughout the meeting anyways. It's mm -hmm. just saying that they were there. But I mean, it's listed under the staff report and that type of thing of, of what. And then again, on the live recording, it would show who, who was speaking. So that they wouldn't be in the attendance line at the top. Mm -hmm. Then it'd be removed from there. Okay. Just want to make sure I had it clear. Okay. Any other? Please proceed. Uh, the duties and roles, so, um, and they're provided in the municipal act. So this, again, uh, the idea would be uh, without uh, having to, to um, put them in twice, like it's already outlined in the municipal act. So just to remove them from the procedure bylaw. Again, it's it's minor. It's just to try and consolidate your, your procedure bylaw so it's not 54 pages strong type of thing. Um, there's not too often that a person would have to go there to find out what the duties are. If they did, the sections are there in the municipal act and we'd be able to get that. So it's just proposing to remove kind of those sections. So all three sections would be removed completely then and just refer to the municipal act. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? 
Please proceed. Uh, the declaration of the pecuniary interest. So it's similar in that it's a member's responsibility. There's the integrity commissioner. So uh, propose that there's no change. Uh, the section may also, again, I'm saying the uh, section may also be repetitive and redundant as it falls within the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. However, it's a quick reference should members of council want. So it's not in totality, but it is, and we can look at it again to see whether we can confine it or, or condense it so that it's uh, again a little smaller. So it would just be a concise summary then. Yeah. Okay. Anything on that? Comments, questions? Please proceed. Uh, so this is where it was going. So the presentations, uh, they're requested by council or uh, committee or staff. We did have it as 10 minutes or otherwise indicated. Again, it's not been too often. And typically, if we know it's going to be a longer one, such as the, um, say, the Amherst U.S. secondary plan or um, the hub or something like that, that we know, then we usually just get a time uh, estimate and we incorporate that and, and look at that when uh, looking at the overall agenda to ensure and the number of scheduled delegations uh, so that we're not again trying to inundate council so that the, the meeting's too long but again allowing for the scheduled delegation that the timing matter or something like that that somebody's looking for so the idea with uh, the intent here would be to remove the uh, 10 minutes on that and uh, supporting documentation three business days. So again, uh, we are looking for having information so that the three business days in advance of the publishing of the agenda, I believe it is. Okay. Any questions or comments from council? Please proceed. There's also a protocol on this, like in more uh, detail. <laughs> again, it's kind of duplicated in, in incorporated as part of the procedure bylaw and the protocol. So we'll be doing one or the other. Yeah, I'm just trying to find two now. The delegation. So again, this is uh, give notice and, and disclose subject matter. Uh, so there's a form that they need to fill out uh, to be sent in uh, five business days um, and they have five minutes. Uh, there's no, uh, there's a the protocol written again at full on this. It's kind of a both fine tune it, um, but they're um, not, there's no uh, recommendation for any uh, amendments at this point. Councilor Willis. <clears throat> this one I struggle with because the agenda comes out on Thursday afternoon. And the meeting is Monday or Tuesday. That means if a member of the public sees something on the agenda that they want to present as a delegation on that topic, they don't have time to get themselves. And so now we're limiting them from being able to speak for five minutes to three minutes because we're forcing them into open forum. So I'd like some discussion on this. Perhaps I'm not understanding what the purpose of the delegations is. Okay. Um, do you want to start or do you want to? Do you want to speak to it? Well, no, I was just, when we had this discussion previously, the de delegations weren't necessarily items that were on the agenda. It would, it could be anyone bringing, um, didn't even need to be a concern, just bringing information to, to council. Um, and so because it wasn't on the agenda, doing a delegation, they had a little more time and uh, there could be some communication. Um, open forum, we brought that in so that um, in the case you were speaking of, if something, if they see it on a Thursday night or a Friday, they can still contact the clerk, be here for open forum, share their information. And yes, it's a little shorter. I mean, I try to keep it close to the three minutes, but they're still able to present their thoughts to council for consideration when it comes down to the item. So that was the, the historical how we got to this here. Again, a delegation has the opportunity to have their materials included in the agenda so the council are able to see them before they speak, whereas open forum, we don't have that opportunity. And I, I'm just concerned that, that you know, I, I have been in a position as a member of the public where I've received the agenda and realized that I don't have an opportunity to speak on it properly because the timeline is is contrary to what our timeline is for publishing our agendas. 
Um, um, I just have a question related to that. If if somebody wanted to, in that scenario, they saw it on a Friday, there was an item they wanted to speak to an open forum. If they sent you material to the clerk's department, it could still be emailed out to council ahead of the meeting if it's received in time? Through your worship, yes, we could uh, we could do that um, and, and forward it out, yes. As long as you had it, as long as the clerk's department had it in time to be able to forward, you could. Again, it would depend on the council members schedule whether they would actually be able to read it or not but. and most of the time you bring it to your worship uh, most of the time on that uh the individual is copied all the council anyways on the item uh if, it, if it's a tiny issue or especially if it's on an agenda uh so we always kind of look at that to see if it's been copied to all the council if, it, if it's a written um a written submission okay okay Thanks. Councilor Berger. <clears throat> Through you to, uh, I guess, the rest of council, this is our opportunity where we could maybe discuss, have that opportunity where somebody can't be a delegation, go through what the, 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 the mayor just spoke to, but uh, I guess we can come to a consensus now to give you as the chair uh, a little extra leeway for time in that situation uh, where they couldn't become a delegation and are only listed as an open forum that you could you know, let them get past the three minutes and go to five or whatever. I mean, I know it's and, a, I know it's a strict rule. I get that, but if we could talk about it now, yeah, then we could. This is that time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and it, uh, I have, I'm, I'm, I try to be as lenient as I can, as long as you know. There have been times that I've let them go on, and then I'll say, okay, you're past your time. Could you wrap it? You know, present your final comments or something like that. I try to do it as politely and not just three minutes it's cut off but yeah i don't know do we i don't know whether does that need to be written in anywhere or is that just the uh, flexibility that the chair can uh, can use i just i just assumed that flexibility i guess through, through the chair i mean it would basically be waiving the procedure bylaw to allow because other than that if you again leave one without doing that uh Resolution again. If it's like, I mean, you'd have to play it by ear in regards to timing. If they're, you know, thirty seconds over, then you know it doesn't make sense. But it would take more to to do the resolution to uh, to look at waiving it. But again, the idea is is that that you have that opportunity to waive that section if there's you know um, information there that allows you to think that the open forum presentation is going to take longer than the three minutes versus five minutes. Okay. Councillor Parks. Thank you. I assume this is probably for the clerk. Timeline in order to get the email out to council. Um, so if somebody saw the report on the weekend, Monday morning, you would have to have that. So in order to hit the council on Tuesday, whereas before it would have to be Friday, and now that we're actually changing council to Tuesday, they actually have an extra day to digest that and get the information out to you. Okay. Through your worship, that would that will yeah we'll have to look at that and, and come back with some recommendations on what that will look like with the now going to the Tuesday and uh, the timelines on that. So we can incorporate some suggestions in there. Okay. Councillor Prater. Uh, a couple of comments, Your Worship. Having been on both sides of this uh, table here, um, the delegation that um, around the uh, start, second year of COVID with minor hockey, we came to the delegation. That wasn't on your agenda. Um, and I think Council listened to that. I like the idea of the uh, open forum being limited to things that are on the agenda specifically so we don't end up with and we in a my short time here one item that seems to come back and back and back um i think that's a that's a good thing uh, as far as uh you know here in council Wells, i get the idea that i guess my one concern about the open form is um does that restrict does that restrict so i'm the first person that wants to talk about uh, oh you're building a giraffe park in the north end 
So does that mean nobody else can talk about the giraffe park? Or, you know, that would be my worry. Or can we can talk about the giraffe park all night, theoretically, if it was on the agenda? There's a time limit on on how, like for the total, isn't it, for the open forum and delegation? Uh, to your worship, so it was 15 minutes that was set aside for open forum. Um, again, I don't know that we've ever met that. We could. And again, that would be something that would be, a, um, I think, uh, sorry, on one of the scheduled delegations. But uh, we did get you to waive the procedure bylaw to allow, and I think it was a timing issue for the individuals that were looking uh, to, to come on as a scheduled delegation. So again, it's just trying to be aware of how many are on each agenda. And again, whether it's a timing issue, so if it's a scheduled delegation and there's no timing urgency to it, it would be suggesting if they could go to the next meeting, um, you know, those types of things. We work with the individuals to try and get them on the earliest and in the most opportune time. Uh, in regards to the open forum of a number of people speaking on the same topic, uh, that is a possibility, and and that basically comes up to the you know the, as a chair just to uh, limit um, or try to limit uh, what they're talking about or new information that type of thing. But it, it's harder to to cut somebody off. And if I know that there's a contentious item that's coming up, and a lot of people want to speak, and they're reaching out to me prior to the meeting, quite often I strongly suggest to them that they delegate a member because if they're all repeating the same thing give it to us once you can fill the chambers give it to us once and just we'll know that everybody's supporting what they're saying and and that's just a way to to help with that as well but that way everybody's concern is brought forward can i just ask a quick follow-up yes. so when a person comes in they sign in so i come in i want to be if i sign in first i speak first and that's basically the way it works And after we exhaust that list, that's when I open it up. Councilor Willis. Very small thing, and I'm going to use a sports analogy, but when does the shot clock start on the five minutes and three minutes? Because we ask people to introduce themselves, and three minutes is very short to put your, your points forward. So and we have it as part of the procedure that we start the clock when they have completed introducing themselves. So that I mean that's that could take 30 seconds. So that's a lot of time. As long as the timekeeper is probably aware. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Please proceed. So the next is under open forum and uh, currently no restrictions on the topic. Uh, however, suggestion that this be changed to an item on the agenda. Um, all other matters may be directed to schedule delegation. So the idea, again, is that council uh, is aware of the information that's coming so that they can be prepared and have, if they have questions or, um, you know, the, they, they just have a bit more of, of what uh, the topic is. Uh, under open forum, if it's on the agenda, then again, uh, the item is on the agenda. So the information that's presented under the open forum, you can take into consideration if it's something uh, that's... Um, said through the open forum that then you want to, you know, uh, refer to the report or you want, you know, more information or something like that, you can make those decisions uh, down and under the item. So that's kind of differentiate uh, between the, the two of them. I think we've, Council, we've kind of, everybody's satisfied we've already discussed that. And that is three minutes, but that is, again, not the Council. <clears throat> So we'll leave it as is, and then again, you have another thing to get back to there. Uh, so rules of procedure, uh, again, we'll just be looking at clarification and consolidation on these sections with minor amendments, streamlining line bylaw for ease of reference and, and 30. So it's the, the duties of the presiding officer, the decorum uh, rules, motions, reconsiderations, voting, debates, conduct, Again, we try to do the um, cheat sheets, as we call them. So again, on motions of what order they go, that type of thing, and, and look at those. But they'll accompany the procedure bylaw versus being incorporated as part of the bylaw where, where they can. So 
Okay. Any questions or comments? Please proceed. Okay, so the committees and local boards, again, uh, very similar with the uh, committee framework. So we'll look at that and incorporate any of the changes that we've had this discussion as part of tonight's uh, session. Everyone good with that? Please proceed. Okay. The schedule, so uh, they were scheduled of the, of the current procedure bylaw, but we'll be looking again at doing those as protocols versus um, schedules. Uh, so the closed meeting uh, correspondence policy. So again, that speaks to when information uh, comes into the into the uh, organization on agendas, whether it's uh, for decision, whether it's for, or sorry, for consideration, or whether it's for information. Uh, the presentation delegation, open forum policy, and then the citizen appointment policy, which was highlighted again under the uh, committee. So we'll be looking at those and making sure that where we can administratively set it up, uh, it will be. And if it's um, um, that there's no duplication, that, that everything's um, the same. Okay. I'm clear, just taking them out of the schedules. Please proceed. Um, other changes proposed is special. Okay, so we're basically at the end. So those are the main highlighted areas. Um, but like there are other separate reports with the other part of the bylaw. So it's hard to put everything in because again, the idea is that uh, the bylaw will be uh, created in an accessible format uh, and it'll be streamlined so that it'll be easy to follow uh, with an index and uh, then the protocol. Uh, would be separate uh, that would again come in the idea would be it of course it will be um, electronic but it would also uh give council a written uh, a printed copy in a booklet form so that you would have it uh, the cheat sheet we uh, can provide you uh, laminated and they can be left here i know there's no kind of drawer but uh, we can leave them out or put them out each uh, meeting just so that it's uh easy for council to go through on those so it's just basically opening up here that if there was any other discussion, comments that wanted to, uh, in regards to the bylaw, what works, what doesn't work. Council, any other items in the bylaw that you wish to discuss? You've got, it's a bit of a burr for you. Um, I've got one. Um, Electronic voting system. We're not set up for that. Do we not need to yet. have that in there? Because uh, basically that's a recorded vote every every yes. Yeah. So vote. within iCompass, it does allow for that. And we had written it into the procedure bylaw. If we ever went to the electronic voting, uh, we had not the time, but if, if we do go there, it's it will allow us to do that. Okay. I just when we're cleaning it up, I thought I don't foresee us going that way too quickly, but I guess we could if it's in there. Okay. Um, I have some other um, items that I, when I read through it again today, it was actually good because it forced me to read the whole thing page by page again. Um, and you think you know something until you do that. Um, there's a few things in here that just, again, I, terms and that that I've never heard used since this was written, but I can just bring them to you. And if it's, I'm just looking at it, if, if we haven't used it in the last four years, it may not be required yeah. just to can clean it up a little bit. I can send them to you though another time. Um, anything else from council? Now, if, if they think of something within the next you know, week or whatever, if they forward it to uh, the department, is yeah. that acceptable then? And you can still consider it when you're coming back with the next draft? Yes, anything, if, if there's there, just uh, email it to uh, uh, to us. And then what we'll do is incorporate that as part of the report coming forward, uh, just because it wouldn't have had discussion. So if it's, you know, oh, I want to change it to when, Wednesday meeting dates, um, because it hasn't had the discussion, it would be, you know, we had this and then the, for additional comments, but um, uh, the idea would be that it would still be open for discussion. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, right. this Councilor Robert. Through you, uh, 
to the clerk, and I don't know where I saw this, but can you just, uh, I'm going back to my experience as an educator, just uh, give me the difference between administrative protocols and procedural bylaws. So the procedure bylaws are for council administrative would be uh, some, uh, something that we would set up and that would make our processes easier. So that more of a staff yes. thing? Okay. Any other questions, comments? So if not, um, we've got a recommendation that the report from the clerk's division, corporate services department, June 5th, 2023, pre procedural bylaw review be received and that a procedural bylaw incorporating directions received from COW meeting be drafted and presented at a future meeting. Do we have a mover? Councilor Bubrick, seconded by Councilor Parks. Any comments from the mover? Seconder? I think we covered right Anyone else? Call a question. All in favor? Motion is carried. So, so your worship, yes. just yeah, for final steps. Uh, so as, as directed from here, uh, the uh, draft new procedural bylaw will be uh, presented at a future committee of the board or council meeting, depending on um, the amount of extent of um, changes. And then uh, we have these notice as well when we uh, go to adopt or, or consider it. And at that time as well for the report, it would be looking at like when we, when the changes will be made, especially on the change of updates. And that will come through as part of the uh, of the report. Okay. And if, like we mentioned, if something comes to mind over the next week or so, if you get forwarded to the clerk's department, that would be great. So one more item, adjournment. Anybody wish to move adjournment? Councilor Willis, so moved, seconded by Councilor Parks. Probably no discussion, call the question. All in favor, motion is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.